Mitchell. If you didn't know the name before, <laughs> if back in 2008, when she represented Trinidad and Tobago at Miss Universe, you still didn't remember the name. You better know it now. And if you still don't know it now, then you're probably the only person living who doesn't. The name is Anya Ayong Chi. That's right. She is, I said Miss TT, Miss Universe 2008. Correct. But these days, um, all of that is history now. Yes. People know you now. Yes. They know I, who you it are. It seems that way. It's yes. called Project Runaway. Yes. Um, you won that thing. I did. What on earth is Project Runaway? Tell us. <laughs> it's a reality TV show that is um, aired on Lifetime TV, which is an American network, and it is centered around the idea of fashion designers in a competition for one prize, and it is run by this ex-supermodel Heidi Klum, um, as well as uh, foremost American designer Michael Kors and one of the editors of Marie Claire magazine. And they, are, they, they run the show and it's, it's fantastic. Okay, I mean, how does a young Trinidadian woman um, work her way to American television reality show? Well, um, from a logistical standpoint, I am also a US citizen. Correct. So born I was in the born US. in New York, yeah, yes, but, but grew up in Trinidad. Yes, it is true. Oh, it's you know true. everything. Yeah. Well, well uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you grew up in Trinidad. I grew up in Trinidad. Went to school in Trinidad. Yes. So for all intents and purposes, you're Trini to I'm the bone. I'm Trini to the bone. Okay. Nothing But you less. have an American um, citizenship, yes. an American passport. Um, so, so that's how. But I mean, I went through the, the um, regular means. I applied by sending in the application. And um, I had several auditions before I was finally accepted. You, you participating in a designer show. Yes. But you can't sew. Correct. <laughs> so, so tell, me, tell me the logic. I mean, I don't understand the logic. I am going to enter the show, but I can't sew. That's correct. Yeah. Well, I was determined. And so, um, having designed for three years, I, I do have a clothing line already and operating out of the Caribbean, but I decided if I wanted to take the next step, then I had to learn how to sew. And so I did. I had a teacher. Um, her name is Delia Aline. Um, from Tobago, and she taught me basically everything that I had to had to had to know, the basics as well as some advanced skills. And we did it in a very you said short. It like a real training. I had to had to had to <laughs> yeah. had to know. It's a real training. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how how important was it to know how to sew to be able to get into that competition? Well, it's integral to the process because the way the show works is that we are given challenges. Generally, you have one day to um, execute and you design and produce the, the garments yourself, um, which is unusual for a designer. Not all designers sew their own clothes. Often they, they design and then it's passed along to production. But in the case of this show, part of why it's so appealing is because we get to actually construct the pieces in a very short time frame and with a lot of pressure. Um, cameras in your face the whole time. Pressure? What pressure? <laughs> you learn to sew in what, four months? Or I know. As you say, you're not a stuck eye. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do that with your eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. So it was intense competition, wasn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, for, as, as a designer. So you you don't expect to make it past the interview stage uh, that's uh, when you enter. In the beginning, yeah. I really did not expect to go past the casting. And, um, so what drove you to, to enter going? in the first place? Oh, um, it was it sort of intuitive to me that um, this was a good next step. I'd had a clothing line operating in Trinidad for three years and I figured, well, where do I go from here? At a certain point, the clientele becomes, um, I saturate you know, the number of people who are my demographic in the Caribbean. And I needed to take it to another level and this was a good stepping stone into the U.S. market and it really has proven to be that. I see. You go past the first stage mm -hmm. and then you're beginning to think... Well, yes. I think, okay, well, at least I didn't embarrass myself and go home in the first episode. Um, and then we went from one to the next and I kept seeing myself, you know, come in the top three because that's the way it works. They divide the top three scores and the top bottom, bottom three scores. And I just started getting more and more of a sense of, well, maybe I have a place in this competition. Maybe I can actually do something beyond what I even expected. But it wasn't until the last um, few challenges that I thought the potential was there to, to do better than even I, you know, I never thought about Whitney, I really didn't. So what, was, what, what is it that was good enough to get you to the next stage each time? Was, was the design itself, was it the sewing? Is, 
I definitely, no, it's definitely not the sewing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was barely, barely holding together. Um, but design-wise... Could have had wardrobe malfunctions. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Not meant for everyday use. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But design-wise, I think that I have a very solid education. I, I went to school in New York as well as in London. And um, although I study graphic design, not fashion, but I think the, you know, the principles were applicable. And, um, and then solid sense of my style. You know, I really think that I have a very unique point of view coming from the Caribbean, and I really do think that that's shone. And I'm glad that towards the end, when I had identity crisis issues of how am I going to win this thing with you know, an aesthetic that I wasn't 100% confident in, and um, one of the judges, Nina Garcia, said to me, Anya, you have, you all have to be you and um, that I should be proud about having this aesthetic that I have. And so I really think in the end, I learned way more than just how to sew. And, um, and Can I, you sew now? Can yes. You sew now? <laughs> I think I'm going to continue to learn. Yeah. Um, it really has en enhanced my design capabilities. So. Yeah. Now, how do you make that transition from graphic design, which you were doing, into mm -hmm. fashion design? What happened for me was um, I was doing graphic design in New York and um, I, I left New York to be with my family after my brother died. One of, one of my brothers, he died in a very tragic car accident. He was 18 and I felt very compelled to um, live my dreams because he lost the opportunity to do that. And I think I, I realized I didn't love doing graphic design and I had always have had a passion for fashion design and um, it was a natural step into a new um, chapter of my life. But design wise, I think that design is like a science and it can be, the, the principles can be applied in many different ways and for me it's like learning how to sew has really taken me to another level but I was always like keen on, on clothes and so that part of it was easy. And, and you had some very big names. Uh, people whom you looked up to. Yes, days. well, Meling has been my yeah. mentor for, from day one, mm -hmm. and she um, she really guided me through a lot of the parts that I think young people need this kind of guidance because she she assisted me on many levels, um, some of which were helping with production, which I didn't know how, where to begin, and then some were more like on a human level, you know, learning how to operate gracefully, um, to be humble, to work hard, um, she instilled some, I mean of course those values were there from my home, my family, I come from a very strong family, um, but she helped me to, to know how to translate that into business and it's been invaluable. And, and that worked for you throughout that project oh runaway my gosh. thing. Yes. Why do they call it runaway? <laughs> <laughs> you know, project runaway. Uh, you've gone through all of the stages and you're down to the last four. And you're thinking, mm, maybe I can't really win this thing right. because the judges are quite tough. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely true. I, um, How do you turn it around? I, well, in the same way of, uh, that I did uh, several points in, in the competition, I found my center and I reminded myself of how grateful I really was to be there. Um, for a moment, I forgot how quite extraordinary it was that I was in the top four and I got more concerned about the expectation on me to win um, and then when I eventually let go of that I reminded myself you know it's just great to be here and have fun and be me and then everything just sort of flowed and in the last very very last day as typical Trini's last minute style um, <laughs> it all just fell into place and it flowed I made about four new pieces in one day um, which what is about, do that? I don't know, you know, it's, it's the grace of God is all I can say. Some form of magic of the universe. <laughs> uh, take, us, take us through that last day, that last four pieces that you had to do mm -hmm. so you can go out there and take it all out. Um, walk us through the steps. All right, so we woke up that morning very, very early. Um, we must have gotten to the studio around seven or so, knowing that we would only be able to work until 8 p.m. because we had to then be at Lincoln Center at 2 a.m. the next morning. So, um, so I just knew that I had, you know, just over 12 hours to 
produce half the collection. <laughs> and um, in some ways it was good that what I did was I bought new fabric and I recreated some of the looks I had from before that I didn't do very well with in the previous challenge. And um, I just knew by updating, updating the fabric and making certain tweaks to the details, it would modernize the pieces. And then I just used my intuition. I just kept looking at, okay, what, in other words, I chose easy. I didn't complicate it. I just figured, let me do what comes naturally to me and do it as quickly as possible and trust that it's going to get done. A lot of it was faith. And, and, and your focus, your, your entire theme was Caribbean. Tobago oh, yes. Love. Tobago I Love. You call it. Yeah. Tell us about Tobago Love. Well, the collection was inspired by Tobago. I, I spent a few days um, just before producing the final collection in Speyside. Um, and I had just the most amazing time there. It's a beautiful place. And I went on my first ever diving trip. And when I was under, under the water, like I really was inspired by the textures of the, you know, of the coral and the sand and then the colors. And it's, it's easy, you know, it's so gorgeous. And so Tobago Love is an ode to Tobago. And it's one of the most magical places in the world, whether or not I'm from there. I think that, and, um, and I think sometimes they need to, like Tobago is this hidden treasure, and as much as I don't want the whole world to know about it, I do want the whole world to know about it, so. <laughs> uh, last night, and, and um, one contestant is eliminated, mm -hmm. and you're thinking, Oh my God. This is my night. No, when? <laughs> this is my night. No, it when can't the remain. second person was eliminated, and it meant that just Joshua and I were standing there, I thought I was going to fail. Like, I did not anticipate being, a, do you know sometimes when you have an out-of-body experience and you can see yourself from the outside? That's how I felt. And then a mixture of exhaustion as well. I was a little delirious by then, the tiredness. Um, and I, I just, I, I really was shocked. But there completely. was a time, it appears as though you were saying, thank you, goodbye, yes, yes. because, you know, oh, by the way, guys, yes. if you need any help, I'll yes. do anything to help you. Yes. By then you had what? By then up, I would, you said, no, I, I wouldn't no, give it. No, I, I think that it was, it was more than um, than what it may have seemed like on TV in the sense that I really reconciled with myself. Um, I was really grateful for everything that had happened, and maybe it sounded a bit like a resignation, but it was much more of an acceptance of of my own achievements, regardless of where it went. And I really believe that that's what then opened the doors for actually winning because. I was intense, you know. I was very calm. I was very, very much in gratitude, and um, it rewarded when, me. When that announcement is made, now what goes through your mind? Oh my God, nothing. <laughs> I was blank, blank, blank. I did not know what to think. I just could not believe that like, the story of learning to sew in time for the show, going from challenge to challenge, like I think by a thread sometimes. Um, Almost literally going home, and literally and figuratively. <laughs> to winning, I just up to now I reflect on that moment and I wonder how I did just like you the know, judges loved you, up. but the fans loved you as well. Yes. Uh, were you surprised by that? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and overwhelmed wow. because um, I don't know. I I just didn't think that it would have that much of a response in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean as a whole diaspora. I mean, it's become way bigger than I ever thought. Um, I guess I didn't put two and two together of how how um, exciting it would be to have a West Indian represented on a world stage in that way. And I really did it for myself, you know, and I don't mean that selfishly. I mean it more in terms of it was an exploration for me. It was a big risk. And it didn't occur to me that that would appeal to anyone else, you know. So it was a big surprise. And in fact, it, it held me back a little bit when I did realize when I went home to, to design the collection, I got very intimidated by the amount of attention it was drawing. And I, I, did, I didn't know how was I going to live up to all this expectation. So the whole process of learning how to get, get past that right before the final show was a very big lesson for me. And um, now you're a star. <laughs> I understand big names are calling you. They want your design. Yes, yeah, uh, I can't they? say yet. <laughs> I can't say yes. Yeah. I'd rather not jinx those things, you know. Yeah. But you were getting some calls. Oh yes, it's yeah. been, I mean, yeah. things exciting. that I never dreamed of. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, really and to be here at World Trade Market, for you know, Travel Market on behalf of the TDC, it's um, fantastic. And with the likes of real stars like, you know, Brian Lawrence, White York, it's, um, 
Ah, who is Brian? <laughs> who is here comes Anya, a young chick. Who is Brian? <laughs> you know? the, the attention is all on you, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's overwhelming. But you, you said that you're going to use some of your winnings for Yes, um, particularly fan favorite that I, I really feel the Caribbean people won because, I mean, they tweeted because it's a Twitter um, voting process like there was no tomorrow and um, because there was no tomorrow because, again, yeah. it was last minute. Yeah. Um, and we won it by a landslide and I felt that, I feel that um, that prize money should go back to the Caribbean. And I've always, what are you going to do with it? I'm starting a microfinance credit, um, microfinance loan program just designated to young creatives. How much money is involved there? 10,000 US. Mm -hmm. um, half of that I'm giving to one of my fellow designers who has a cancer foundation, but I've already raised the other half, so it's still $10,000, and um, I've, I've appealed already to the government and to private sector because I think it's a very valid cause and case to be made for young creatives. There's so much talent, and often they get dissuaded to follow a career in the creative arts when, you know, a lot of parents think that it's not a real job but this way there might be more structure in place to actually create a viable career and so I'm, I'm very excited about that. So you're looking forward to the future? Absolutely. Right. It's ex more exciting than I ever imagined. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Anya. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All the best to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.